continuar y en ciertos momentos eh, parecía que tenía... Hey, welcome to D-Lab, everybody. I got a little treat for you guys, a Zenith console. This is the Model 10S464, which runs the 1005 chassis. It's got push-pull 6v6 audio. It came to me from the original owners who live right in my neighborhood. Their grandmother bought this thing as new, right? And they've had it all these years. Well, it doesn't work. They just want it to operate again so they can enjoy the audio like they used to do in their younger days. So it's here just to get it going. This is not a total restoration video, but while I do these repairs, I'm going to share three tech tips with you. Let's go. So the question is, can you take that old radio out of your attic that's not receiving and it's humming very loud, simply put in new filter capacitors and it plays again? Let's find out. I'm going to plug this thing in first and show you what the radio is doing. Then we'll change the filter caps and see if it magically fixes it. All right, plugged in the radio. We're not going to leave it on very long. I just want to show you what it's doing in its current condition. There she is. Just humming away. No receive whatsoever. Let's put in some new filter caps and see if it fixes it. So removing these chassis isn't too bad because these radios were designed to be serviced. First you take off the knobs, the switch plate simply unclips, this one unclips and then you pull that harness back through when you retract the chassis around the back. You unplug your speaker cable, your antenna. There's four bolts underneath and this chassis will pull right out. So with all this vintage equipment, you got to be really careful. Because all these cables are brittle, so I used a screwdriver kind of help to ease those plugs out. Get them out of the way. Got to get those four bolts out and we'll pull it out. So I got all these fancy little spring bolts out. Kind of nice these things are spring mounted. All right, I'm going to pull this back and make sure that little switch assembly gets through there. All right, there she is, a little dusty. But it's actually in great shape. Let's take a look at those filter caps. All right, you're seeing this as I see it. To give you a little history, the family that owns this radio are the original owners. And uh, I guess it used to play a while back, obviously, and then things happen, things age, right? So supposedly it's in stock condition. This cap looks a little bit newer than that one. All the other caps are definitely original, the old waxers. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll change filter caps and see if it'll play. So one thing I noticed I want to point out, this is your tuning. It's got this nice flywheel. There's supposed to be a band that goes from here here and that drives the tuning capacitor and the front dial pointer but unfortunately that band is gone so before I can make this thing fully operational I'll have to locate that part all right so we'll start with this cap here I'm pretty much gonna clip it out of circuit remember positive faces down and we're going to put in the new ones here with J hooks on the old leads. I normally don't show all these steps, but 
I've had some of you that said you'd like to see it. So here we go. All right. So I got some beautiful Mallory's here. 20 microfarad caps at 450 volts. I think the originals were like 16s. These would do the job just fine. So I just J hook them in like that. You may think, why aren't you going all the way back to the terminal board? Well, these terminal boards, guys, are kind of uh, brittle from the years of service. So sometimes when you go back to the terminal board, you can actually cause more damage than good. So I J-hook them in, and I leave the original connections alone. Well, there they are, new Mallory's in place. So I'm going to reinstall this in the chassis because I need to reconnect to the speaker and the antenna and let's see if it receives. Alright, here we go. I have to tune this from underneath the chassis because it's too hard to grab hold the tuning cap. But I have it on. And let's see if we can hear anything. As you can see, the hum is gone. I don't know what band I'm on here. I'm hearing white noise like it's trying to receive something. The switches are pretty dirty. Pliers to adjust the volume. Well, guess what? It appears to be working. Look at there. There's the tone. That's all working. <laughs> ha! Well, guess what? I guess if you just change filter caps, it'll fix it. I'm amazed. I did not expect this. So I was able to repair the drive section using an o-ring because that original cloth band is impossible to find so rather than interrupting this apparatus pulling these shafts out so i could get the o-ring around that and wrap around the pulley i actually cut it okay so here is one of the o-rings you cut it with a razor blade so that it's nice and true and then you re-adhere it with super glue right so that's what i did and right there is where i made the cut it's as good as new, or at least as new as it's gonna be, right? The other thing I noticed is there's a lot of play in the shaft. There's play up front, and there's play behind. If you look right in here, you'll see a lot of play, like maybe a bushing is either missing or damaged. I can't do anything about it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some lubricant in here so that it lasts a while longer. I have no idea what could be missing or what is worn, but that's not part of the repair. All right, so the next thing I need to do is clean and lube the band select switch. Obviously, I'm gonna use deoxit. It's the best thing out there because the bands are kind of cutting in and out, as you heard. The switch is extremely dirty and dusty. So we'll get that cleaned, loop things up, and retest. Now we're close to retest time, but first I need to verify the tubes. We're going to do that on my B&K 747. Currently I have a 7A7 installed. And it's not quite getting into the good zone. I'm sure all these tubes have seen better days. It looks like pretty much all these tubes are shot. Here is a 6Q7 under test. Look at that. <laughs> Nobody's home. All right, I'm probably gonna be changing all the tubes. 
All right, so the 6L6 tubes are also shot, but if you look at the tube sockets, they were supposed to have been 6V6s. So no loss there, right? So I completely retubed the radio and it is playing well. Plenty of sensitivity. The Magic Eye tube is working, but it's extremely dim. I don't have one on hand. Next thing I'm gonna do is come around to the back and there's a switch down there and it says TV and radio. We're gonna convert the TV input for MP3. So here's that television radio switch. So now when you're in television position, you plug your MP3 into this eighth inch stereo jack. It's simply wired through two 47K resistors to the high side of that terminal board. And it should play your MP3s. All right, here it is. It's on the MP3 player, plugged into that rear socket. Plenty of volume. Pretty easy update for your Zenith to play modern music. All right, so the Zenith lives again. I did what was requested by the customer. Obviously, if you had one of these radios, and you want it to last a long time, it requires a full restoration, meaning all new caps, check out of tolerance resistors, give it a good cleaning, etc. But that's not what the video was. This video was a source of tech tips. We'll see you again.